Welcome to the No Budget Indie Film Cast, where we dip into the independent film universe to highlight those little films that you might not have heard about elsewhere. Will you agree with our panel? Or will our panel agree with each other? Tune in to find out. I am Milo Dennison, and with me, as always, is Claire Milan. Hello. And Carl Halfini. Hello. All right, folks, today we are watching a film called The History of Future Folk, which is a biography of the New York-based folk band Future Folk. Uh, Actually, it's not a biography, but it's a made-up biography. So these actually, this is a real band that plays in New York, um, and they decided to do a film kind of about this backstory that they created for the band. So the band wears these red suits and they've got these red buckets on their head with the face masks. And they've created these characters that they're from outer space and came to earth and heard music and decided to be musicians. So it starts off with uh, the first guy who is general general something is other. I can't remember his actual name. Prius or something like that. General Prius. Something like that, I think. <laughs> yeah. Or Preus. I know Preus. it sounded like Petraeus. Yeah, yeah that's what my thing is. I kept thinking Petraeus, and I'm like, I don't think that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the other guy's the mighty Kevin. So anyways, General Petraeus comes to Earth, yeah. and he's got a virus that he is supposed to release on the planet to kill everybody off because everybody on his planet is going to die from an asteroid that's going to crash into it. He walks into a store and he hears music for the first time. And he's so smitten by music that he can't kill all the people off. And he decides to become a musician. He gets married, has a kid and all that fun stuff. Later on, another character comes in. He's called the Mighty Kevin. He shows up to assassinate General Prius. And he's a terrible assassin and then also hears music and decides to join the band is pretty much the gist of it. And then, of course, another assassin comes, but the assassin's from another planet, so they don't have to worry about him listening to music. And comedy ensues. So it's a lot of um, music, and it's a lot of... What, what's weird about it, though, is how quickly they all acclimate. So, for example, when Kevin shows up, and they even, he even calls him out for it, and he shows up. And he has a guitar and suddenly he knows how to play it. And the other character is like, yeah, you've had, you've been here for like 24 hours and suddenly you know how to play guitar and just anything that these characters do, they suddenly seem to perfectly know how to do, which is really weird, but maybe that's part of their alien superpower or something. Who knows? Um, But um, yeah, that's the gist of the movie. Yeah, it was interesting. I sat down earlier to watch it and now it wouldn't be my cup of tea. I don't really like sci-fi films like this. But I can really appreciate because it's very low budget. Apparently, only made, but only, I'm not sure how much it's made for. But only made fifteen thousand dollars. I didn't know these were a folk band, and their music was really good. I really loved the music. Um, I found sometimes it dragged a little bit, and I, I kind of suspended my disbelief when he played the guitar. Could play do stuff suddenly, like playing the guitar. Yeah, that was um, because much. they're aliens. But I when when he had um a really like there's kind of a really weird scene with the uh, cop and. He goes to her house and he fires a gun and kind of stuns her, which is, would be absolutely terrifying if you're a woman and there's a strange guy there and you're paralyzed. Like that is scary, um, no matter who was doing it, the alien or whatever. Uh, so I think that storyline, when later on, spoiler alert, they have kind of, they kind of start to build a relationship. I didn't quite, I don't think she... I don't think a woman would ever do that. I think she'd be too scared, even if, even though she's a cop. So that didn't really ring true. Um, I have to admit, I was kind of tired when I watched it. I did fall asleep slightly, <laughs> three quarters of the way through, which I'm really sorry. Um, it doesn't do with filmmakers. I just think I was tired. <laughs> so I missed a little teeny bit of it. Um, but yeah, like I really appreciate the costumes, very inventive. The music was beautiful, um, but I'm not the target audience for it. Um, I wouldn't choose to watch this film if we were you know unless unless because we were doing this I watched it but I appreciate that it's low budget and it's amazing it would look with being a low budget film how much access they had to certain facilities and how much they created and the, the actual art design of it and um yeah but this, some bits of it dragged a lot and but I loved when they played the music especially the guy behind me he's a fabulous voice and oh, both yeah, they're both very talented voice. musicians very and, talented and, banjo and guitar and everything too yeah yeah and it's like and also their voices really complemented each other together so but I think 
the film, I didn't really, um, I, I thought, like, the, I know female characters were completely 2D. <laughs> you know, they were completely underwritten <laughs> really badly in this. And they were, I didn't really like the characters, even though they were nice, but I didn't really like, um, I wasn't really rooting for them as much as I wanted. So, but but I do appreciate how much they created. Who wrote this? Do you know? I should... uh, John Mitchell, the guy who directed it. Ah, so okay. I, to my understanding, he's friends or knows the two, the comment, the duo. Yeah. And basically okay. they were like, okay, let's, let's make a movie out of this. And so they went to him yeah. uh, to write and direct it. Yeah. And there was just something missing out of the script. I didn't connect to it, but again, there's a huge market, market for this type of film. I'm just not it, uh, but I did enjoy it. Um, you know, even though, sorry, I fell asleep slightly, but that was more like I was a bit tired earlier. So. What? What a scathing review! <laughs> By the way, does the uh, well, does the cat want to say something? You know, apparently, so, like I was, yeah. I was trying to actually keep her down yeah. on the ground, but she was just sitting down here, like meow, meow, meow meowing at me, and so I let her jump on my lap, which then so she uh, shut up, but now she uh, yeah. Yeah, is uh, uh, apparently wants to be on camera. So sorry. What, what what's her name? <laughs> Uh, this is Bonnie. This is this is my wife's cat. Oh. Bonnie the cat. Yeah, See, I have five hey, cats, and they don't want to go near me. <laughs> not near me. But they don't sit in my lap. I wish they were lap cats. Like she's Bonnie. not a lap cat either. I, I, I think she's she just not. wants attention. But she's she's oh. definitely she's not much of a lap cat. She, but she does like to be petted a lot. Um, okay. So getting back to the film, <laughs> uh, after twenty minutes, I thought, oh, I'm not going to like this film. Uh, but then it, it actually grew on me and uh, I actually did enjoy it in, in the end. Um, I, I thought the, you know, the plot, it was decent enough plot. It kind of had a sort of a, a sense to it and the humour, the humour was understated and it was, there was some very, quite, quite, very, quite funny moments in it. Uh, like, um I don't know, there was one scene when, when they're trying to break into this uh, place with the with the rocket and uh, he start, he's shooting, he's shooting at the, the officers. You see him like, and you think, oh, he, you know, he's he's struggling here. And then you, you, you look and he's actually hit everybody, you know, which I thought, you know, that was kind of funny. So I thought the humor was very good. Um, and, and, and like for a low budget film, I, I, yeah, I, I, I did like it. I mean, I, I, I can't say. I mean, an hour, an hour and a half was perfect. If, if it'd been any longer than that, I, yeah, I, w I wouldn't have lasted. But uh, I, I, I've seen it. You know, I've seen a lot worse. Um, so I think for what it was, you know, it was, it was, it was perfectly fine. The only thing I would say, I mean, just with the, with the whole female character and the, you know, the, the cop, Kevin sort of, uh, relationship. It was a bit cringy at times, and and I and I thought that they did. Uh, uh, it was a bit of a trope. With, like here's 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 a fat man doing silly things. You know, let's laugh at him. Oh my god, he's really talented. Uh, but um, I don't think I don't think it, they went overboard at any stage. And uh, they, they 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 kept the lid on uh, mostly. So uh, yeah, I th I think it was really good. I mean, and if I did something like this now, I would have been quite proud of myself. What about the uh, salsa scene where Kevin shows up with the police girl and she's doing lessons and he's like, okay, let me dance with you. And, and he instantly knows how to do salsa as well. Like, <laughs> so, yeah. well, I mean, like I, that falls you can, into you, I mean, you can, you can suspend his belief. For this yeah. You really have to with this film. Yeah. They're aliens. But I don't, I don't, I just think she, her, cause she's human. So her reaction to him being turned up like that, you, you'd be terrified. <laughs> Or someone who actually drugged you <laughs> or stunned you, like you, you'd run a mile. You know, there, there was something missing there. There was, there should have been um, a scene, something seen where he tried to explain a bit or something before she was attracted to him. Well, you he know, sang her a song right. though. And when I you suppose. sing somebody a song, you know, that, that creates an emotional connection between the two of them yeah. so yeah but i mean maybe, like, maybe the song works. Yeah, she was she was a captive audience exactly <laughs> and once she got through the song she was smitten yeah yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah i'm 
Yeah, I, I'm I'm scary and deranged, but I can have got a good voice. Exactly. <laughs> well, so all women fall for that. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and have you guys ever seen Flight of the Concords or do you know of them? Yes, I've seen bits of it. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. this kind of reminded me a bit of that because they kind of do the same thing with their series is they're a folk duo. And in there, they did a TV series, which was just them living in New York, trying to make it as musicians. Uh, they didn't do this whole from outer space thing. They were honest and were like that they're from New Zealand and that kind of stuff. But it did kind of remind me a little bit of that, that the kind of comedic folk music as well. Yeah, I mean, the music was good. And obviously they are, good. Yeah. They are talented. I presume it was, um, you know, playing and singing. Uh, yeah. And, I, you know, I like the, you know, when, when he was sort of introducing the uh, the act one evening and, you know, they're getting more popular. And then you see people in the crowd starting to wear the gear and, you know, I thought that was very good. And they actually, that kind of led on to a scene at the end as well, which was very clever. It was quite, it was, it was quite clever in a lot of ways. Uh, it, it was, it was, you know, a good, a good script, I thought. And for being low budget, like they don't hide the fact that it's low budget, you know, they're like, yeah, these are basically buckets on our heads. And Mm -hmm. yeah, this other aliens clearly wearing a mask, you know, picked up at the store kind of stuff. And so they kind of use their money in in good areas with some of the special effects and the locations and stuff. But I think I I think where those locations were, I wonder, like with space shuttle, how what location was that? Yeah, the, the museum that that, that yeah. takes place, and and so they would have probably had to pay that museum a certain amount of money to film there at the yeah, end stuff as well. So unless, unless they built it, you know, because you don't see the whole thing, I don't think. But mm-hmm. and there was also it was one scene which I thought was very good when they were uh, like a montage where I, I forget what was happening, but they were, and and I wasn't even related to what they were doing, but they were doing these exercises. Was that one day? Oh, like, yeah, oh, that was yeah. like the fight training montage. So. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, the Colonel General Petraeus was teaching Kevin how to fight. Yeah, yeah. But what, what was happening? Like, I mean, there was, there was, were they, were they? I know that it was whatever they were doing when they were cutting back and forth. Did what didn't it wasn't really related to them having to do fight training. I think, I think it was a parody of something, wasn't it? I think it was a parody of another film. Possibly it's a, of a lot of films. Yeah, uh, but um, it's like. It's like a rocky kind of a thing, you know. Do, 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 do. But I mean, all the, I think they didn't have to train for what they were doing. I, I can't remember what it was. Uh, maybe they were just like playing music or something like that. But uh, yeah. And why did Kevin just not instantly know how to fight? Because he instantly knew how to do everything else. <laughs> you know how to dance, play the guitar, sing. Uh, <laughs> so. And then when it came, when he ha- came to actually, and he had to actually fight. He wasn't that good. No, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, all right, guys. Well, what'd you think of the film, uh, ratings wise? So for me, um, I'm not the target audience for this film at all, but I really appreciate it and the like the the locations and the the way they used all their music costumes and everything for a no budget film, and parts that were very funny and very entertaining. Uh, so for me, it's a three star. That's well, pretty good considering, yeah. We- the way you described it <laughs> yeah <laughs> um I'd, I'd say this this is this is a film if you were for if i was a lot younger if i was a teenager you know or a young teenager i probably would have thought this was amazing this is brilliant hilarious uh and so i had to kind of you know dredge up my inner child a bit for this uh but yeah it was it was good and, and I, I i'm gonna give it my rating is based on and like it's the fact that it's a low budget film and you know it's um for what it was uh i will give it four stars um yeah i'm with you call i kind of started off not really liking it and then at the end i did like it and for what it is i think it works so i'm going to go four stars as well well, there you have it, No Budget Film Cast audience. This movie is available on Netflix at the moment, History of Future Folk. So if you check it out, now the cat leaves that we're done. Mm-hmm. Cat's like, oh, you guys are done talking? Okay, I'm going to go out to the other room. <laughs> All right, folks, you can let us know what you think of the film if you've seen it on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook at No Budget Show. 
or leave us a comment in the uh, notes or whatever or a review. And with that, we'll just say, see you next time and goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.